The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 2, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning. Learners should be able to recognise how dialogue and action are related to character and theme. Hi there everyone. In this lesson, we will further explore Shakespeare's use of language. We have seen how language creates setting and establishes character. We have also seen how dialogue develops characterization and raises the issues that Shakespeare explores. We shall look at two extracts from The Tempest, a play which is set on an island. Both speeches are by Caliban, who is the son of the witch, Sycorax, and the original possessor or owner of the island. He is only half human and is often brutal and savage. In the first extract, Caliban is trying to encourage two sailors to kill Prospero, the magician who has taken over the island. This is what he says. Why, as I told thee, it is a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst brain him, having first seized his books, or with the log batter his skull, or paunch him with a stake, or cut his wizened with thy knife. Remember first to possess his books, for without them he's but a sot as I am nor hath not one spirit to command. They all do hate him as rootedly as I. Burn but his books. He has brave utensils, as he calls them, which when he has a house he'll deck with all. And that most deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her a non pareil I never saw a woman, but only Sycorax, my dam. And she, and she, as far surpasseth Sycorax, as greatest as least. Now the focus of today's lesson is the language of drama. So let's look at the kind of language that Caliban uses as he plots his revenge. Let's listen to the first few lines of the speech again. Why, as I told thee, it is a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst brain him, having first seized his books, or with the log batter his skull, or paunch him with a stake, or cut his wizened with thy knife. Mm, there are some violent images in this extract. Did you notice? There thou mayst brain him. Or with a log, batter his skull or punch him with a stake. This means to stab him in the stomach, or cut his wizand with thy knife. To slit his throat or his windpipe. He really seems to be enjoying all the gory details, doesn't he? There's an intense pleasure in the brutal words that describe the savage ways in which Prospero can be killed. Let's look at the next few lines of this extract. Remember first to possess his books, for without them he's but a sot as I am nor hath not one spirit to command. They all do hate him as rootedly as I. 
we certainly believe him when he says he hates Prospero rootedly. What a forceful word he uses. It suggests more than merely deep hatred, but a hatred that is firmly fixed in his heart and mind. What are we meant to make of this creature? Is he simply violent and vengeful? What questions does Shakespeare want us to ask about him? Think about this. Is there any reason for his hatred? Is his vengeance understandable? Has Prospero done anything to justify such hatred? Now, obviously, to answer these questions, you would have to know the rest of the story of The Tempest, or ideally have read the whole play. So, if you can't answer these questions, don't worry. However, what is important is to notice that these are the types of questions you should be asking yourself when you read a play. And they are also the types of questions that would be asked of you in a test or exam. Let's look again at that extract. Another point to consider, is Caliban entirely the sot he calls himself? By the way, a sot is a blockhead, a fool, an idiot. Another question that could be asked in an exam or that you could ask yourself is, are there signs of intelligence in Caliban? A possible answer for this lies in the next part of the extract. Burn but his books. He has brave utensils, as he calls them, which when he has a house, he'll deck with all. Well, he is certainly clever enough to realize that Prospero's magical books are the source of his magic powers and so must be removed from him. Right from the start, he emphasizes, having first seized his books, he repeats, remember, first to possess his books, and reiterates, burn but his books. Now, let's look at the final part of the extract. We know that Caliban is only half human, so what do you make of his appreciation of Prospero's daughter? And that most deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her a non parallel I never saw a woman, but only Psychorax, my damn. And she, and she, as far surpasseth Psychorax, as greatest does least. So, what do you make of Caliban's description of Prospero's daughter? Is it just a primitive sexual desire? Or is there a sensitivity in his appreciation of her? How do you respond to Caliban's admission? I never saw a woman, but only Psychorex, my dam, and she. But she as far surpasseth Psychorex, as greatest does least. Do you feel a little stirring of pity for the creature? Well, to investigate this further, we will have to read on. Language is playing a powerful role in describing Caliban, and the key issue to consider is whether Shakespeare wants us to see more in Caliban than a savage brute. Only 30 lines later, Shakespeare gives Caliban this speech. Be not afeard. The isle is full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twanging instruments will hum about mine ears, and sometimes voices that, if I then had waked after long sleep, will make me sleep again. And then, in dreaming, the clouds, methought, would open and show riches ready to drop upon me. That when I waked, I cried to dream again. This is a beautiful speech in which Caliban has human-like responses. Be not afeard. 
The aisle is full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Caliban describes his response to the noises. Sounds and sweet airs. That he hears which he says, give delight and hurt not. These sentences make him appear sensitive, as do the next few lines. Sometimes a thousand twanging instruments will hum about mine ears, and sometimes voices that, if I then had waked after long sleep, will make me sleep again. And then, in dreaming, the clouds, methought, would open and show riches ready to drop upon me. That when I waked, I cried to dream again. Caliban appreciates the loveliness of the mysterious music of the island. This contrasts with the previous speech, where we saw him as brutish and cunning. Here he has a childlike wonder and sensitive appreciation of music. So we are starting to see Caliban as a complex character. On one hand, he is brutish, cunning, childish, and ignorant, just as we saw in the first extract. However, in the second extract, we see that he also has childlike wonder. He is sensitive, he shows appreciation, and he is responsive. By showing us different aspects of this character, Shakespeare prevents us from responding simplistically to Caliban. In the language Shakespeare gives to Caliban, he creates a multifaceted character and raises all sorts of issues about how we treat people whom we consider primitive and uncivilized. You should now feel much more confident when you are asked to read or watch a Shakespearean play. The language is not as difficult as you might have imagined, and there's a lot of fun and enjoyment in Shakespeare's theater. In the next lesson, we shall look at how Shakespeare develops his themes, and we will specifically look at the play Hamlet. For your task, read a synopsis of Hamlet. From me, goodbye.